it's been a while and the minute following the blurb is the reason why <sighs> come on <laughs> let's do this <laughs> My uh, general plan with this uh, with this piece is to actually set it on like a rising wave with this being the cresting point of the wave and the Kraken kind of coming out. So I want you to imagine that his sort of tentacles are back here and he's swooped along and he's sweeping up and out of the water. Um, Rather than just sat flat as it is, uh, you know, f for the for the gaming purposes. So I have a scrap piece of foam here, which is going to uh, define the area I have to work with. So I'm going to have the tentacles kind of coming out. And the other thing I want to do is take the boat. Let's get the, these loose bits out so that I don't lose them take the boat and make it look like it's kind of really kind of being tum tossed and tumbled in the in the uh, the sea I just want to mark out that kind of uh, cresting wave So I'm thinking about having this sort of cresting wave. Remember, you've got to look, you're looking down on the top of this, you've got to remember. So I'm sort of visualising from the top what I'm after here. So here we go. Um, this is basically the base uh, and the understructure, which is just done out of EVA foam now. I'm going to have two cresting waves, you know, sort of splitting. So this is the surface of the, the like the actual flat of the, the sea water. And then this and this will form the two cresting waves. So that should work out okay. So the figure, well, the reason for this little platform at the end here, I want him to look like he is, you know, he's coming up and out of the water. So various tentacles will be back here. They're coming out of these cresting waves. And then if you notice this little, this little notch here, that's just going to be uh, a part of the understructure that will hold the boat um, at an angle because I want to be able to take that. I want the client to be able to take the, the boat out, put it on the game table, as well as the tentacles and, of course, 
the Kraken body itself. So they all need to be able to lift off this base. So right now I've got these two strips of EVA which have been cut and they're just they're just pinned uh, through the bottom from the top you can see here uh, just to hold those in place. This is only pinned in place. Nothing has been glued yet uh, so that I can make sure I get my design of the, the two cresting waves sorted before I glue anything together. So the very first or the very next step I need to do is to uh, um, fashion the foil to sit the right way and then I can do that as a dry run as well and once all that's done I can then uh, make sure that I'm happy with that design that the, the waves are going to crest the way I believe they're going to crest and then I can glue it all down using hot melt glue. So that's the plan. So part of the beauty of the uh, of using the foil is all of this crinkled texturing will actually help in the final painting of the water. And you can see something similar to that but using cling film instead in my uh, lava terrain videos. Packing that down, making sure that I'm getting that slope right. Now when it comes to this wave there will be an upward curve from this low point, it will start curving the other way. Okay, so right now it might be looking a little bit uh, goofy and wacky, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's going in the right direction. So we want the wave coming up like this and then cresting over, and then the same again here. We're cresting here, and then there's a dip, and it flattens out and rises gently again, and then there'll be another crest here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take these pieces off one by one now and then glue them, the individual strips back down using the hot melt glue gun into their places and then carry on the moulding of the foil to get the right shaping for the, for the crest. Okay, so here you are. You can see I'm a part way through uh, getting the, uh, the the foil glued in. So you'll notice that um, we've got the, the slope up to the crest here. This piece will still be modelled on the top. Um, but the piece that's on the other side, I'm just making sure that it's getting that, that curve uh, over so that when we put this piece on the top we're, we're, we're working into that, that curve there. Um, and yes, and the other important thing to remember is, is that the, your, your crest should taper out into the flat of the water. Um, this one is going right off onto the very tip of the, the stand whereas this one's going to dissipate before it reaches the edge of the stand. I'm going to use some artistic license to create the secondary crest that's happening here which is from the kraken actually surging up and breaking through these waves so here we go here's the, uh, the sort of the finished uh, under sculpt I suppose is the word I don't know if that's a technical term or not but uh, you can see I put some of these uh, ridges they're also lettered as well so there's no witch that'll just sort of drop on there that just helps to support it 
because uh, I want them coming out at something of a, an angle. So at the moment, the edges of the of the foil are obviously still quite flexible. Uh, so I want to harden those edges off, and I'm just doing that with hot melt glue, just running a bead backwards and forwards. And that's going to start helping to uh, develop the the sort of the surf at the edge there, but what it's going to do is help to really harden off the uh, the foil sculpt. If you see this is already now hardened off. I mean that glue's still a little little warm, but it's already quite quite stiff now. Okay, well here we go. That's the um that's the finished well not the finished, it's obviously got to be painted, but that's the undercoated uh base for the Kraken um, uh, so the uh, the main body of the Kraken sits. It's the right way around. There we are. So the main body of the Kraken will sit, kind of coming out at the end of there, like uh, like so, and then. Ooh. So you can see I've got these recesses that I've created and there are several of these that the uh, that the tentacles will go into and I need to magnetise these so that they'll just clip in there. But yeah, I'm pleased with that, that's come out. It's nice and durable now, it's got none of the flex of, uh, that puts people off EVA. So with all of the uh, structure out of the way, it is finally time to get to some painting. Um, I'm going to work here with a really nice deep blue. This is a cobalt blue working into those deeper shadow areas. Nice and dark. Uh, here we want to give the impression of depth in the water. So I'm working with a fairly heavy layer of the blue uh, wherever I place it. But I don't want to eliminate all of the black. I want little echoes of that to show through. So this is cobalt turquoise. Wonderful colour. Love this stuff. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take uh, a good heavy coating of that and starting at the tip of the cresting wave, I'm going to work my way back into the still wet cobalt blue to produce a wet blend one to the other. So we get a nice smooth transition from this lighter colour into the darker blue. This is the base of the WizKids Mini uh, that, that, that comes with it um, and I, I, I wanted to keep this uh, so I've used some of that dark blue and I've basically just dry brushed around it uh, with the dark blue and then wiped off the excess so we just get some transition of that colour uh, from the base up into the original base of the Mini. To start building the first part of the highlights, I take some of the cobalt blue and uh, I add white to that, only a small amount. But I want to kind of marry up with what's happening in the in the original base of the of the uh, the WizKids Kraken. Uh, so I'm looking to match that kind of uh, coloration there. And so dry brushing around all of the uh, focal area highlights, uh, just really starting to build up the texture and making it a real. Uh, giving a real sense of movement to the uh, to the water. I've taken a little of that uh, cobalt turquoise and I've added to it some cadmium yellow, and then I've thinned it down to create a nice wash. And I'm going to lay that uh, wash across the sort of the the heart of the cresting wave. And if you've ever uh, uh, been lucky enough to be at the ocean when the waves are cresting and it's the early evening light, you'll see this beautiful emerald glow within the wave itself. And then I'm going to just take the rag and I'm going to just lightly dab off some of the excess wash uh, just to knock it back a little, just enough uh, to, uh, to give that wonderful luminescence to the crest. 
And of course, don't forget to do the underside of the crest as well. That, that, that light is passing through the wave, remember, at its thinnest part here. Once the wash is dry, uh, I'm going to take that cobalt blue again, uh, lighten it up a little further than the last step, and uh, just start uh, adding what I call a low light, so it's not quite the highlight, uh, to the to the sort of the top portion of the cresting waves. I'm only going to add this here because I really want to draw the attention to these focal points, the waves themselves cresting. And now it's time to paint the surf itself. I have a, a practically pure white here. There's a tiny touch of a, of a blue in it. Um, and I use a, this isn't a isn't so much a dry brush it's quite a, th a thick bit of paint because i really want it to really stand out on the edge here and i kind of just dab and flick across the very front edge of that cresting wave just working along i'm after a broken paint mark um uh, so i that's that's why we're dabbing the brush rather than dragging it to create what we would look, do if we were doing a, a true dry brushing and then where the waves start to get more chaotic as we rise up to that pinnacle point where the kraken is bursting through the water we can get a lot more crazy with this white surf as the waters are just crashing around and uh, sparkling all of the light around it and then to tie it finally into the uh, the original uh, whiskey base, uh, just add some of that uh, that highlighting to the to the cresting points of of the waves of that particular part of the base. At last, we can turn our attention to the Kraken. But before I can start painting it, I need to deal with some of the fairly uh, obvious uh, seam lines that are here in the uh, in, in the mold itself. I'm going with the classic bicarb and super glue uh, mix to fill these gaps. They're only fine gaps, so that shouldn't be uh, too much of a problem to do it this way. I dare say there are better methods. If there are some of you who have addressed this particular problem in the past and have a better idea, uh, please let me know down in those comments. But it worked out in the end, so I'm happy with the process I took. So I've got a number of these uh, FW uh, artist inks. I've used them as a, you know, as an artist illustrator in the past, but I've never actually used them on my minis. Um, and I'm keen to do some, because um, this is a nice big guy, I'm keen to do some uh, some airbrush work with inks on him. So I think that comprises my main colour scheme. So right now what I'm basically doing is just working an organic blend between these blues and greens, just feeling my way as I go. No, uh, no real sort of plan at this point, um, but you know, that's, that's, that's just the way I roll. <laughs> Um, but I get progressively darker as I go down to the uh, like the torso beneath the torso into the waist. But as I got here into the uh, the underbelly, I thought it'd be really cool to introduce that uh, lovely cobalt uh, color that I'd used in the highlighting of the waves to really sort of tie the two two elements together. Uh, and I also apply that to the end of the claws as well uh, the, to uh, to help. Uh, just bring some focus to them. 
I decided I wanted to add even more of a focus uh, to the uh, to certain parts of the cracker and in particular the face. Uh, so I took an orange and I airbrushed across the tips of the, the facial tentacles, uh, across the uh, tips of the claws and across the tips of the uh, rear spines as well. This orange to, to add this kind of hot element um, between uh, uh, in contrast to all of the cool colors that the rest of the diorama has been painted in. So I want to lighten this um, the, the breast area up a little bit. I'm going to um, remix this color but with a bit more white in it and then uh, and then just do some a little bit a bit more of a lighter area. So as I sit down to my uh, uh, Kraken project, I've uh, just finished up a very stressful bit of uh, first resin pour for my uh, river tiles, uh, which I don't yet know if they've turned out, but the link is up here uh, above. Um, but to uh, come back down to uh, some normality and a bit of chilled out, I'm going to carry on with the Kraken got a bit of beard clipper on to uh, to uh, chill out to so let's crack on with the Kraken I want to play around with a little bit of surface detailing here it's not really implied on the miniature itself but it's something I fancied having a crack at um, so I mixed up that uh, that sort of pale green colour, uh, which is almost a teal now at this stage, uh, added a lot of white to it and then just went in with a detailing brush and just painted a load of little sort of blobs passing up the, the side where the dark uh, uh, coloration of the upper torso transitions around to the underbelly into the lighter torso and you often see this on kind of uh, amphibious creatures and reptilian creatures this sort of a transitioning pattern and I enjoy playing around with this particular uh, uh, aspect. I also took the time to further detail this by going around each particular little sort of ovoid shape and creating a little dark edge line, which I thought really kind of brought an extra level of complexity to this particular little detail. That dark color I used uh, to create that little detail was a mix of a magenta and a Prussian blue. So you get this really deep dark blue. And I decided I was gonna give the uh, kind of the back shell of the torso um, a, a wash of that colour to just deepen it, strengthen it, help to add a little contrast between the torso and the head there at the back. It's time to break out the small brushes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've just got some Vallejo Bone White here to uh, to just um, uh, dry brush across the teeth to uh, to make them stand out a little. Uh, just uh, carefully dragging the brush across them so that the uh, they start to uh, to pick each individual tooth out. I had a bit of a small debate about what colour I wanted the eyes, but I went with dark, and this is the same dark that I used for the wash uh, across the back of the torso, and also around those uh, uh, side details I did earlier. Um, I also used this dark as well to go in and just refine the kind of gap between the face plates around the head, just to bring a bit more contrast, a bit more detailing into the head itself, pull the eye toward it as a focal point and I carried that on down and around the mouth and through the tentacles just really just bringing some contrast there to to really draw the eye it's always a scary moment when you're about to just put that final highlight into the eye <laughs> here we go Oh. 
So, it is not going to be lost on all of you that uh, this project has actually been going on for quite a while. Uh, some of you will know that uh, you saw me uh, playing around with the idea way back before we even moved out here to the countryside. Um, I think the sun was shining back then as well, which means that this is the second summer that this project has seen. Um, it has been an immensely busy year and uh, I have really struggled to stay on top of everything between the commercial illustration work that I do, the YouTube channel, as well as my own work for World War Fay. And a part of the World War Fay project is involved in this particular uh, uh, project uh, with the bit of animation that I did because World War Fay eventually wants to be released using animation and I produce uh, some of the miniatures and terrain pieces as I build my experience in building stage sets ready for that particular part of the overall story that is World War Fay. Now, if you don't know what World War Fay is, that is my own personal passion project that over the last few years I've built, been building toward, uh, that I'm hoping to release out to you guys as a short uh, film, illustrated books, as well as the paintings and prints that I sell on my website. The illustrated book Kickstarter is almost ready to be launched uh, live. Uh, if you are interested in supporting that Kickstarter for the illustrated book, then please check my links below because the link for that Kickstarter pre-launch page is there. If you want to know a little bit more about what World War Fay is, you can go and check out my websites, which are also linked down there. But most importantly, to support World War Fay and this channel going forward, Patreon is absolutely such an important part of all of this. And with that, I would like to give a good shout out to my patrons and say I am so sorry that I have been absent from the world for what appears to be a while now. Uh, Adam Dahlberg, uh, Sarah Allen Jones, thank you. You are my two newest patrons and you are very welcome. Uh, on my journey here. We've got Daniel Nickel, we've got Deft, we've got 28mm RPG, we've got Aaron Relier, uh, uh, John Abbeys, we've got Mary, we've got uh, Heather Papworth, we've got Andrew Southall, uh, Helen Savin, Chelsea Shand, Anna Fernandez. I knew there was somebody else in there. Um, such, such great support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you really want to help the channel out, please come on over to Patreon and, uh, and uh, just, uh, yeah, just say hi. Um, so going on in the background here for the actual Kraken project, we've got me working on the boat and the chest and the oars. Uh, very simple brown base colors, uh, uh, lightening up with ochre-ish uh, sort of highlights. Uh, it's a simple process and I'm sure most of you already know what that is. This has been quite a long video, not only here now in you watching it, but in the making of it. And a large part of that was the animation. It has taken me a long time to work out how to do it, to put the pieces together. I'm just here on my own doing this and um, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the process. I've learned a lot along the way. The next one won't take me quite so long, um, but it, it certainly really has helped me along the way. And, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I hope you enjoy it. Please tell me down in the comments if you enjoy it. And um, I'm gonna give you another run through of it now because boy, it's worth it in my mind given the time I invested in it. I also have a, a, a uh, recorded how I put it all together as well and I'm hoping to release that soon. It is by no means a professional animation and it is by no means a professional process and hopefully it'll help you figure out how I was doing it as I was trying to learn it. So here are some beauty shots, here is the animation, thank you so much for being patient with me and I really look forward to bringing out the next video. 
sooner than this video. Take care of yourself guys, bye bye.